Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Easter worship here at Prince of Peace. I am so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Carl. And uh, yeah, whether I'm just meeting you this morning or just seeing you uh, again for the first time in a long time, I get to see you regularly. I am so glad that you're here. And I pray that this morning, this time of worship together, just fills your soul with Easter hope and joy uh, that fills you up as you even head on uh, from today. So uh, here's the thing, a couple of things about the service. Uh, we've got more spectacular music uh, all through the service, uh, and I uh, hope you enjoy that. Hey, if you're joining uh, from home, uh, we're glad you're here on live stream. Pray it's meaningful for you as well. If you get the chance, uh, you can check in on the Church Center app, letting us know you're worshiping with us. Um, Due to the nature of this service, we are not going to be lifting up personalized prayers later on in the service. But that being said, we as pastors and prayer team love to be continually praying for you and with you. So if you're celebrating something, you're concerned about something, please do share those prayers with us. You can do that through the Prince Peace Church Center app on your smartphone or device. If you don't have that set up already, there's bookmarks with QR codes uh, right in the, in the pew rack in front of you that you can make use of. It's relatively easy to follow the prompts. Uh, also, if as you're worshiping, you feel so moved to give an offering, you can do that as God leads you in and through the Church Center app or through the plates in the back as you head out. But hear this, if you are a guest here today, feel no obligation to give. Uh, we're just glad that you're here. The mission of Prince Peace is generously supported by tithes and offerings from our members and friends. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Later on in the service, uh, kids are going to be invited forward for a message just for you, an Easter message. So uh, look out for that and be ready to come forward. And then also uh, there will be an opportunity to receive communion. So uh, some of you uh, would prefer to receive communion right there from your seats. Uh, so there were communion kits available in the lobby. You can still get a hold of those if you like. Uh, but otherwise, we'll give you further instruction about coming forward to the altar uh, later on in the service. All right housekeeping. There we go. We on the same page now? We ready to do this thing? Let's, uh, let's hear a great song right here. Out of the shadow
Friends, we begin our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand as we open worship with our call to worship this morning. Words from Psalm 118. I will give you thanks, for you answer me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has made his light shine on us. With bows of hand, join the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. And we sing. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's a joy in the house of the Lord, there's a joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be Shout out your praise, there's a joy in the house of the Lord. My God is serving in this place, and we won't be quiet. Shout out your praise.
we go to the Lord in prayer. God of life, your spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and writers of Scripture. Your spirit draws us to Christ and helps us to acknowledge Him as Lord. We ask that you will send your spirit now to give us deeper insight, encouragement, faith, and hope through the proclamation of the Easter gospel and all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our reading. Our reading is taken from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the first verse. When Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into, Ga into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were too afraid. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, I'd like to invite any children to come forward, children between the ages of 0 and 103 to come forward for a children's message. Well, some kids at the first service helped me, but I need your guys' help to finish my picture. I started making this picture and some of the kids at the previous service helped me decorate it, but it's not quite done. So can you guys help me as well? Here's some crayons. I want to make a special picture uh, to help celebrate today. What is today? Does anyone know what's happening today? Easter. It's Easter? Oh my goodness. What happens on Easter? Easter <laughs> Who else comes? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. You guys can scoot in here. I'll get out of the way. You can scoot in, and if you want to draw, like, flowers or hearts, you can come get some crayons. Here's some more. We want to make it super colorful because we are celebrating Jesus. So while you guys are coloring, can I tell you about the very first Easter? Yeah? I can tell you about that? Okay, so it was a long time ago, and there were some women, and they all knew Jesus, and they had been really sad because he had died a couple of days before, and so they went to where they had laid him in a tomb to prepare the tomb and everything. But when they got there, do you know what they found? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. An the, angel. There was an angel there, yes, but Jesus was not there, and that was the biggest surprise. What happened? Where was Jesus? What happened to him? He rose. He had risen from the dead already before the, angel, the ladies got there. And then the angels, they had a very special job for uh, the ladies. And they were supposed to go and tell Jesus' friends and all of his followers that he was alive. So that's what our sign says. It says he's risen, he's alive. And we are celebrating that Jesus rose from the dead and saved us from all of our sins. I think that's a pretty exciting thing to celebrate. You guys are doing an excellent job with this picture. Thank you. So this picture we're going to put up at church and help us remember what we're celebrating today. But I have a really special gift for all of you guys to take home so you can go and tell everyone that Jesus is alive. So why don't you go ahead and put your crayons back in the basket, and I'll pass out this book. It's a really special book. It's going to help you guys go and tell everyone about Jesus. 
So you want to put all your crayons back in, and once we get your book, we're going to talk to God, okay? We're going to talk to God. All right, put all your crayons back. So now you guys can take this book home and you can share it with your friends and your family. Did everyone get a book? All right, so now you all have a book. Let's go ahead and talk to God, okay? So if you want to fold your hands, and you guys can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross to forgive our sins. Help us share your love with everyone around us. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you guys so much for your help. You can take your books back, and I'm going to go hang up this picture, okay? No, it's yours. You can keep it. It's for you. Thank you. As our little ones return to their seats, I invite you all to stand as we profess our faith on this Easter morning with people from around the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Brothers and sisters, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our next song.
<laughs> Please pray with me. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Here we are. We're gathering, you know, nearly 2,000 years after that very first Easter. And, and we continue to be drawn into these kind of moments together with this sort of magnetism, this sort of uh, hunger in our hearts for, for the hope that Easter offers, uh, with this kind of sense that what happened on that very first Easter, it changed everything. I love the way that Mark tells uh, his uh, rendition of the, of the gospel, his, his account of that very first Easter. Because he tells about the women hastening to the tomb very early in the morning, and they're expecting to find a corpse, right? They're expecting to uh, maybe be able to anoint uh, Jesus' body, but they don't find a body there. Instead, they find, uh, Mark just says, this young man. He doesn't even use uh, the terminology of angel. It's like young man dressed in white, and he gives this message. He's not here. He's risen. He's alive. He's gone ahead of you, right? And I love the raw nature of what is encapsulated in Mark's telling of this gospel because he really kind of captures this sense of like they, they just don't know what way is up. They don't know exactly what it is that took place here, but they know that whatever it is that just happened, this changes everything. And the, descriptor, the descriptors there, they, they tell the story of that. It's like uh, they're... They're afraid, and so the messenger says, don't be afraid, and then uh, describes them as alarmed, as trembling, bewildered, shocked, shaken, afraid, and they're running away, fleeing from the scene. This rocked their world. It changed everything. Of course, that wasn't the end of the story, but see, Mark, he leaves us on this cliffhanger thing, right? We know the rest that... There would come after Easter the ascension into heaven and Pentecost, the sending of the Spirit and the message going out, emanating that, that energy from the empty tomb. It continued on and it echoed from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. And Jesus' first followers, even as they encountered this most unthinkable, unimaginable happening, that a man would rise from the dead, they went and they they shared this message, this news, with such great conviction and facing such adversity and at great cost, even a cost of their very lives, believing it to be true, even as, it's like, but, but how can it be? It's mind-blowing. Somebody rising from the dead. We know how this life works. But see, they went in this conviction, and we wouldn't be here without their message going forth and us receiving it as well. Easter changed everything in our world. Historically, it changed everything, and it changes everything still for us today. But here's the problem. How often do we celebrate Easter? Once a year? It changes everything, and we come around to it once a year? Maybe some people will say like every Sunday is sort of an opportunity to, uh, to celebrate resurrection. They call it a resurrection day. You know, it's why we worship on uh, Sunday uh, instead of the, the older uh, Jewish practice of, of Saturday, a Sabbath. It's like that's the resurrection day. It changed everything. Easter, there's so much buildup, so much preparation and blood, sweat, and tears poured into the preparation of these coming together services. We try to get the invitation out try to make everything special, and then bring it all together in a moment as we're all gathered here together. We cue the laser light show and explode all the fireworks and band, you know, and raise the roof, blow the lid off this place. And then, poof! What's tomorrow? Monday. <laughs> no. Don't remind me. <laughs> the other problem is this, that our everyday lives are often a far cry from Easter hope and joy. We've seen things. 
We've experienced struggles. We've got pain in our bodies. We've got griefs. We've got people that we're recognizing today who are not uh, celebrating with us. They've, they've crossed over to the other side. You know? I love uh, to kind of interact uh, with a whole diverse band of you over time as, as pastor. And I love to invite you into conversation with Pastor Matt's classic question, how are you doing? You wrote a book on that very question, right? How are you doing? And I love when I get the opportunity to hear from you how it is actually going. Not just, oh, yeah, fine, whatever. Like, the truth of the, the struggle or the height of the celebration, it's a beautiful thing to be able to share in community. And these responses, they're very telling, right? Um, so, and there's a whole array of them. It's like, yeah, I'm so excited because it's Easter, Easter Bunny came, got a special thing. It's like, oh, I'm struggling today because my team lost last night. I'm still really sad, you know? Uh, I'm hurting because I just injured myself or lost my job, you know? I'm feeling overwhelmed because there's a to-do list a mile long that's waiting me. All these things. Or maybe as one of my friends is uh, classically tells me when I ask him how things are going in his world, he's like, oh, just another Monday. Didn't matter that it was Wednesday. Just another Monday. They're all the same. And it's true. Sometimes you wake up and it's like, Late night Carl really punched early morning Carl in the gut. This is not pretty. Like, you wake up some days and it's like the sewer backed up and you got a mess in your house or you got some other thing going on and you're not feeling it. Our everyday lives are often a far cry from Easter. We live in a Good Friday world and we know the full measure of pain and suffering and brutal things and people doing nasty stuff to each other. We know all this. And we live in the midst of this. And sometimes it's easy to forget that Easter hope that we have and to live each day as though the stone hasn't been rolled away. Even though we are Easter people, it's a struggle to live as Easter people in real time. And so instead of living as though Easter changes everything, we live oftentimes as if Easter hasn't changed hardly anything. And so with all these things in mind, I was led in prayer as I was preparing for this gathering with all of you. Like, what, what can I give them, Lord? What do you want me to give over to them? And so I offer to you an Easter prayer for every day, for what you do with the other 364 days of the year, when it's not the celebration of the year, when we're pulling out all the stops, okay? An Easter prayer for every day, and it comes out of Psalm 118. That's We had a portion of it as the call and response when we came into worship, Uh, and just a little bit of it. And this is a beautiful psalm, and it's like the soundtrack of Passover and Holy Week and Palm Sunday and Good Friday and Easter Sunday. It's got all of this stuff in in the lyrics of it, and it is a pilgrim psalm. It's a processional psalm. It's a party psalm, and it kind of enters in with this kind of note, this deep gratitude. It's like, thank God for he is good. The leader says, and he calls the people, his love never quits, they say in response. Okay, so the leader says, thank God he is good. His love never quits. Okay, and this side of the room, leader says, thank God he is good. His love never quits. And this side of the room, thank God he is good. His love never quits. People in the very back, thank God he is good. His love never quits. People in the very front, thank God for he is good. His love never quits. All y'all, raise your voices. Thank God for he is good. His love never quits. Let me tell you a story about his love that never quits. You see, I was pressed on all sides, surrounded by enemies, all kinds of opposition, beat down, struck down, but not destroyed. They, they bled me out. They beat me brutally. They even took me up to the horns of the altar and they fastened me there. And my life was given as an offering for you. They made a mockery of me as king. Jesus reminds us. See, the very offering up at the center, this 
thank offering, this life offering, the stone the builders rejected, pressed down but not destroyed. See, I was not defeated. God saw me through. He is my strength and song, and He has become my salvation. And this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord has done all this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And so, Open wide the gates, swing them open, let a parade start. Cue the party, cue the band, pull out all the stops, the celebration, because our God, His love never quits. See, Psalm 118, it tells the story of the struggle, and it also tells the story of overcoming and the victory celebration that I didn't die but I now live. And it conveys the victory of the King Jesus to his people, us. Reminds us of how we're all connected. King and people, call and response. But there's one verse in the midst of this whole thing that I want you, if you don't hear anything else today, just take this one verse with you, okay? This is the day the Lord has made. That's the the leader's call. This is the day the Lord has made. Now, that's a recognition of like a miraculous occurrence. Like God did something huge, the exodus. God did something huge. He raised a man from the dead. But what if it's a day for those everyday deliverances? What if it's a line for every single morning when we're Easter people living in a Good Friday world, when we wake up and we groan and it feels like just another Monday? What if before we do or don't do anything, We declare victory on the day, and we say, this is the day the Lord has made. We pause, we recognize our breath in our lungs, and that we are, in fact, above ground, still living. We feel our heartbeat. We look around, and we survey the landscape, and we just pause in what God has already done in causing us to be alive on this day. Miracle. This is the day the Lord has made. Let it begin with gratitude. See, One of the beautiful things that I get to do as a pastor is to go and make visits uh, to people who can't get to celebrations like this, okay? Who are in care facilities or who are at home and dependent on the care of others, right? And it's a gift uh, to them that I go and I'm I'm giving my presence and God's word in those, uh, those visits and communion. But you know what? These people give a tremendous gift to me as well in that exchange. There's incredible friendship in that. And I am so blessed by their wisdom and their perspective as they reflect with me, because categorically they are not having a good day. They are on a decline in their life, and they are up against a lot of struggles. And they have reason to be frustrated and to complain and all these things. But do you know what? Remarkably, I was sitting there earlier this week, like, this lady's on oxygen, and I ask her how she's doing, and how does she begin? She's trained herself to begin like this, To begin, this is the day the Lord has made. To begin by reflecting like, you know what? I've always had a roof over my head. I'm not where I want to be right now, but I've had a roof over my head. I have always had food to eat. I've always had clothing to wear. I have always had uh, this this family. And so I'm so thankful for the people that I get to love in my life and who love me in return. And it's incredible. And so I just had to share their, their testimony with you. One of our members reminds me every single time, God is good all the time. God is good without fail every time. This is the day the Lord has made. What if we began each and every day, the other 364 days, by declaring victory before the day even begins, by recognizing that we live in the light of the resurrection, that we know the fullness of the measure of God's love for us because we know what he did for us in pouring out his life for us on the cross, That's not in question. We know how dearly loved we are. We also know what is possible, that God is able to raise people from the dead. And that victory that he claimed over death in and through Jesus, he promises it to you and me. There will come a day when Jesus returns and everything sad will become untrue and everything will be made new. And that empty tomb, that'll be yours and mine as well. This is the day the Lord has made. So that's what the leader calls. But then there's a response. It begs a response. It goes further than that. It goes, this is the day the Lord has made, and the the people respond, we will rejoice and be glad in it. So let's try that. This is the day the Lord has made. 
We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, there you go. You're raising the volume. That's great. You're getting this. Right? What an incredibly different way to move through the day. And it's, note, it's not I will. It's we will. And, and will we? Some, are, uh, some of the translations say, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We will. I think it reflects that there's a sense of a choice here. We have a choice to make every morning about how we rise, how we face the day, each of the things that we have going, the to-do list in front of us. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And see, we are much more susceptible to Satan's attacks. We are much weaker and much more prone to fear and anxiety and depression for, for Satan to get the best of us when we're off on our own, when we are alone. He loves loves to prey on us and all the heavy things of life they seem so much heavier when we're off on our own right but when we've got even just one person let alone a whole community of people who have our backs like that's a world of difference and the problems that we face they shrink down you know and the joy that we have when we start sharing it with people even just one other person who's happy with us celebrating with us it starts to grow when you got a whole community a whole church that shares your celebration it's like that joy just explodes It multiplies. It's huge. This is the stuff that changes the world. And what if, what if, as we rose each day, recognizing that today is a gift, today is the day the Lord has made, we go and we look for the people with whom we can share that celebration, that gift. We look for those people who need Easter hope and joy, love and peace. And we're led by the Spirit to gather people together and to share what God's given us and to, to gather community, to gather consolation and hope, to gather as church, continuing to proclaim this victory in the midst of a Good Friday world because we are Easter people. And we know that Easter changes everything. Thank God He is good. His love never quits. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For Christ is risen. Risen indeed. Hallelujah. Live in Easter hope every day. Amen. We now worship our God of love with our gifts of love in the form of our offerings. Thank you both. Friends, we stand as we pray over these offerings this morning. Our Father in heaven, multiply these gifts and increase their usefulness. Magnify your purposes in their distribution to the end that your kingdom may come and your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. And all God's people said, Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. As we prepare to share in this meal together this morning, we pause for a moment to prepare our hearts and minds to receive this amazing gift. And so I ask, do you believe you are a sinner? Yes, Yes, I believe it. I have failed God and others in my life. I am a sinner. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes. Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned. Do you need God's help and forgiveness for your life? 
Yes, I need the gift of life he gives through Jesus. What has Christ done for you? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins. Do you believe that in communion you receive the true body and blood of Christ with the bread and wine? Yes, Yes, I believe it because of his word and promise. Then friends, confessing this out loud and knowing this to be true, come for the table is ready. If you have an individual communion kit, I invite you to take that out at this time and open the wafer side and take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Turn over to the wine or juice side and take and drink the blood of Christ shed to set you free from all of your sins. You may be seated. Uh, Brief announcement about communion practice. Uh, We have gluten-free wafers as well as regular wafers. You just need to ask. And in our trays, we have wine on the outside with juice on the inside, and we have the common cup available. If you are coming forward and would just like a blessing, we invite you to just cross your arms and be more than happy. Pastor Carl or myself would be more than happy to bless you. Come, for the table is ready.
And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in one faith until life everlasting. Go in his peace and serve him with amazing joy. Amen. Friends, we pray. This is a responsive prayer, so you join in after I start. You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves to others. You have raised us with Christ and made us a new people. As people of the resurrection, we will secure you a joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we sing. up front and behind the scenes to make worship happen for us. So glad that you're here in the house. So glad you joined from your house. Yeah, I pray that you're leaving here full of Easter hope and joy because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So a word before you go, okay? So the artwork up on the screens during the message, that exists as a mural in our gym. Just do left out of this space. Uh, if you want to pause there or take a diversion trip that way and get a, a family photo and that kind of thing, it's a great place for it. There's also cards, takeaways uh, to help you keep that Easter message fresh for the other 364 days. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's go share Christ's peace.